I mean, we can do a little better than that. The world declared this is y'all day, so all the mothers in here, if you want to not, you should be thanking God, but see, in my eyes, you a mother every day. I'm not going to wait one day to celebrate you. I'm going to celebrate you every day, the things that we take y'all through. So I know y'all got to be some strong women. So let's give God a praise that he let us see another day. Amen. Amen. Some mothers didn't get up this morning. Some woke up and is not able to do nothing for themselves. So somebody got to help them. But if you are able and you have breath in your body to give God praise, let's lift him up. Amen. It's all about that. I just hate that they talking about one day. So if y'all going to be able to wait one day to be a mother, boy, it could be some tore up people. But praise God. We're going to go ahead and dismiss the uh, young adults and, uh, and the children to their classes. And, uh, and as they go, we're not going to worry about who here. Amen. We're going to go ahead and praise God. Because the Bible says if two or three are gathered together in his name. And I see it's more than two or three of us in here. We gather together in his name. We going to lift him up. Amen. But we praying that everybody get here safely. But right now, we still got to go head on and do what thus says the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you right now, Lord, just for what the world called Mother's Day, Lord. Lord, in my eye, Mother's Day is every day. Thank you for the mothers of this church, Lord. Thank you for our pastor, Lord. Thank you for Mother Turner. Thank you for all the mothers out here in the congregation, the one that's here and the one that's come, Lord. I know we put a lot on them, Lord, and we thank them for being strong. I thank them for being God-fearing women, that they will have somebody to turn to in a time of need. Lord, strengthen them today and every day, Lord, that they could be who you would have them to be, Lord. And Lord, we pray for the next service, Lord, whoever it may be, Lord Bishop Brown, that he get dipped down in the well of wisdom. And Lord, you give us a word to your people, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Got to be ye also ready. And uh, I just thank God for what he's doing. And once again, Happy Mother's Day for the ones that wasn't in here when I first said it. They gave me something, but I had to put them back in the shop. I can't see out of them. Amen. Uh, the lesson today is called to the life in the spirit. And I like that because we all know what the life was in the flesh. So it's a big difference in the flesh and the spirit. Called to life in the spirit. So that means that we got to do some things to be able to be in the spirit. And the first thing we got to do, we got to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Amen. Do you all agree with that? Amen. Amen. But Paul was talking to the Romans because before Jesus came, I'm going to just give you a little brief summary. The world was governed by the law. And the law said if you break one, you might as well break them all. If you, if you, can't, if you break one, you don't broke them all. So there's no way we could do everything the law say do because Different laws carry different penalties. And back then, if you broke the wrong law, if you got caught for adultery or all kind of things, the death was penalty. I mean, the penalty was death Amen. by law. Amen. Amen. So we got to thank our God, the Father of heaven, that he sent his son down here to break all that mess up, to free us up from the law. But we still got to obey the law. He said he didn't come to do away with the law, but he come to fulfill the law. But walking and trying to do the law, we are, we going to continuously fail over and over and over again. And the aim for the change is said, by the end of the lesson, we will contrast living in the flesh with living in the spirit, destroy emptiness or trying to find life 
following the flesh and share what it means to have your mind set on living in the spirit. And we'll be coming, if everybody don't have a book, we'll be coming out of the book of Romans, chapter 6, no, chapter 8, 1 through 14. Can I get somebody to read that in focus? Henry had run from his past forgiveness. He couldn't tell anyone about it. He addition was a disease. He knew that. But his actions were addicted, and the people he had hurt were wrong. It was sinful. His 12-step program taught him to make amends with those he harmed and sinned against. That was crucial. And he did the best he could with an awareness that he might or might not receive forgiveness from these harm parties. He worked the steps. Sober for 12 years, happily employed for 11, saved for nine, married for seven, and three children later. He found himself here. He could not imagine why his pastor would entrust him with another young brother who was struggling with addiction. Henry had moved on and didn't want to dig up the past, but through the experience of this young man, Henry would redefine his views and be forever changed. When he was charged with being a light, Henry found that impossible because he had not worked his steps through the, the way he believed he had. When Henry went through these steps, he made amends with everybody except for one person, himself. He hadn't forgiven himself because he hadn't acknowledged his sin against himself. Then with this young brother forced him to face that. He could not truly be free until he faced the reality of his sin and received God's forgiveness for himself. Henry acknowledged the sin, faced it, and was free from the shame and power of the disease over his life. How can you be how can you how can being an example for others of God's grace help us receive more grace for ourselves? Can I get somebody to comment on that? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Sister yes. Christian. Man, I like that. When I read that, I put my name because I was once one of them drug addicts, and I heard a lot of people along the way. But the main thing I had to do, I had to forgive me, which I forgave everybody else. Cause see, long if you don't ever forgive you, you always gonna beat yourself down every time you turn around. Lord, if I want to done that, it's gone. I can't bring that. I, I, it's gone. I thank God for Him delivering me. From that, but see, when you go through something and they put somebody else in your life, it's because you don't been through it, and you can tell them you know the struggle that you're going through. That's what we got to do to the sinners. We got to let them know we were also sinners too, so we know what you were struggling with. But there is a man named Jesus Christ that could take all that away from you if you just believe. So we all went through some things in our life to help other people, then it helps us too. I mean, when I read that by the drug addiction, I was like, wow, that hit me right home. And I thank be to God. When I read that, I said, he got 12 years, I got 11. Thanks be to God that God done it. I hurt a lot of people, and I hurt myself. But in the process, he put me with some more good people that I can love and that can love me back. I can't worry about what I done done, that's gone. But every night I did, I reflect on where God brought me from, so that made me press forward. That's what we got to do, is press forward. And they talk about the call of life in the spirit. We all know what the life was when we walked in the flesh. The Bible say, in this flesh dwells no good. We did some wild, crazy things before we became a born-again believer. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I know I have. I thought of some, I might not do many wild things, but I thought of some crazy stuff when I was a sinner. And I didn't know that it was some grace and mercy down the road for me. But see, I didn't know that at that time. I just thought that's what I was supposed to do. I was supposed to get up. I was supposed to go party. I was supposed to run all the women in the world. I was supposed to do everything but serve God. Amen. Amen. See, I was corner minded. See, I didn't know. So, I knew of God, and I knew of Jesus Christ, but they wasn't in my life. So the flesh pulled me away from 
knowing who he was until I finally come into the true knowledge. It's amazing that the Bible says sin is only pleasure for a moment. Yes, that's right. And see, sometimes when it feels good, right. you don't want to give it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even when your mate might be doing you wrong, but just because he's there or she's there, sometimes you go through extra things you shouldn't have to because it feels good. Oh, he makes me feel good. Oh, she makes me feel good. But you're still hurting on the inside. Because if y'all both knew who the Lord and Savior was, could you cut it down a little bit because I got a little uh, revive in it. It was called, when two people is in a relation together, they sinners, ain't no telling what might happen. You tell a person you love him, then you go do something else. You be calling the next man, or he be calling the next woman in the next room. After he just told you, or you just told him that you love him. Sin. Our flesh had acquired a big appetite. So it, it craves for that even now since we are saved. But Paul was letting us know that there is a way of escape, that you don't have to fulfill the lust of the flesh. But you can fulfill the lust of the spirit. It feels good when you can walk in the spirit. But you can't walk in the spirit when you're in the flesh. Amen. Amen. So when I get somebody to, to read the first four. Can I respond to that? You still respond. Because the, in the aim for change, it says contrast living in the flesh with living in the spirit. Me, myself, trying to get this thing right, I don't walk in the spirit always, all day long. I don't walk in the spirit. God is helping me with right now. I'm just being real because that's what we're supposed to do. Um, but every day I'm trying to line up without dealing with this flesh. I don't know if anybody else does. <laughs> but every day I'm trying to line up without dealing with this flesh. So this is, this is a good lesson because this shows us that we have to accept what we do every day. That's right. Because we every, ain't nobody walking in the spirit all day long and ain't thinking crazy, ain't, ain't saying something crazy. But because of his grace and mercy that continues to be with us every day. We can ask for forgiveness and try to get that thing right. But I, I like that less. I like that what he's talking about because he had to accept it. Accept it means that I had to, I acknowledge that I, I did wrong. I have done, I thought this crazy thought or I did this or whatever. But I thank God that I can ask for his forgiveness, not man's forgiveness, but his forgiveness and he forgives me. But see, we all have fallen short. And see what Paul is demonstrating and writing to us, even though we still going to fall, we got somebody there now to cover us. <laughs> see what I'm saying? So now we got somebody there that will spread the blood over us and say, Lord, I know your children still love you. Mm -hmm. But we still fall short every day. I don't get up to sin, but some kind of way, every time I try to do right, wrong, always get in my way. But in this lesson, it's showing me that I don't have to keep living that way. Even though I've done it, he will forgive me. I'm not going to continue. I don't go out and willingly sin. That's why I always pray for known and unknown sin. Because this flesh is no good. It's corrupt. And it's hard to walk in the spirit when you're corrupt and all jacked up. The spirit is the last thing you want to do when you jacked up, but that's the thing you need to do. We got to be real. That's it. I struggle every day. It don't make no difference. I don't go by no title. I struggle because I'm, I'm in this flesh. But I fight to let God be glorified in my life. Yeah, I get some crazy thoughts in my mind and in my heart. But I ask, Lord, forgive me yes. for my wrongdoing. Jesus. Long as I'm in this flesh, it's going to be like this until he come and get us. Right. That's right. Right. But you don't have to always walk in the flesh. Right. Yeah, I don't walk around the spirit all day long. I wish I could. But if we live long enough, when he comes in, we'll walk around in the spirit yes. all day long. Right. So right now, we got this walk going on That's right. between the flesh and the spirit. Which one you gonna let win? Whoever you serve the most, that's the strong man. Yeah. If you walk around in your flesh all the time looking to do stuff, right. instead of trying to get it right, then you in the flesh all the time. Mm -hmm. 
But I said, Lord, help me get out of this flesh, Lord. I want to walk in your spirit to do right. See, that's how I can love you better by walking in the spirit. See, I'm walking in the flesh. I don't have no love for you. And see, the things of God is through the spirit. It's not through the flesh. know one person that walked on this earth that had a, a spirit-filled mind. That was Jesus Christ. What did that verse say? Let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. That's what we working on. We working on that cause. See, the flesh is corrupt. I'm the same way. You wrong me, but see, we got to cash that down quick. We can't let it tear it because it will take over. And then the flesh, then now you running around doing stuff you know you ain't got no business doing. Then when everything comes down, now you on your knee crying to the Lord, Lord, please help me which he will, but we got to learn to try to stay away from those situations and putting ourselves in. It's always going to be there. It's at the door. No matter where you go, sin is there. But he's showing us that we don't have to be slave to sin no more through the faith in Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. We don't have to live by the law no more. We can't do all the laws. One of the biggest laws we break today is speed. I'm a, I'm a big advocate. I speed all the time. And I know it's wrong. Me too. I know it's wrong. Yes. Me too. Speed limit 65 and I'm running 80. Somebody get beside me, they think they can run. I'm go, they go up, I'm going up. And I, and, I, and I know I don't need no points on my life. I'm in the flesh now. I'm ready to ride. I'm ready to ride. You want to ride? Let's ride. Let's go down the highway. That's what sin do. It'll take you for a ride further than you want to go. See, we got to get the wheel back from sin and drive and let the Lord drive for us. That's right. He the pilot, not me. Because when I repeat to my God, my co-pilot, no, God is my pilot. Because I done crashed plenty of times trying to drive by myself Amen. without him. But we got to get the grip that if we do sin, that there is a way of escape. So all this lies on your feet in what Jesus Christ did. Jesus Christ did at the cross. That no matter what. See what I like about Paul and me. I got good intentions. To do right, but sometimes that wrong just get in the way, and sometimes it takes me a little further. My mind go; it takes me a while before it snap back. So I thank God for Him renewing my mind. I put a lot of stuff in there to alternate my mind, but He got the power to renew it. So we can't be slaves. We can't let sin be slaves over us or keep us in slavery, keep us in bondage. We can't do nothing when we continuously walking in the flesh. So now we got to practice. Lord, I need your help today. I'm tired of messing up. I'm, everything I do just seems to be wrong. So, Lord, I just need you to guide me. You order my steps. You put a watch over my mouth. See, we got to pray for ourselves. The Bible says examine yourself. Pray over yourself. It's good for people to pray for, but I had to pray on myself because I know what I need at that moment. Lord, come and help me. I'm going to do something stupid. Amen. 
I probably don't want them to think like that or do that, but it's okay. Hey, man, you don't have to raise no hand. We just got to be real with ourselves. Sin is real. Very real. Yes, it is. Sin is real. It's going to be in this world until Jesus Christ comes. But we got a way that it won't, that we won't be slaves to it through him. Amen. I thank God for what he's doing. I see y'all every day in church. I said, man, I thank God for what doing. I said, but your life could be tore up. I don't know. I know I struggle. It don't make no difference when I get up behind the podium. I still struggle. I still go through things. The flesh still crawl. It got an appetite for sin. And Paul was telling the Romans, you got to try to cut it. You got to cut it off, Lord, to keep growing. It'll grow, grow. What in the word say? The wage of sin is what? Death. Death. Okay. So if you keep sinning, that's what'll happen. Yes, ma'am. Like, just like on my job, do people know that I'm saved and I go to church and stuff? And boy, when I say they be trying, they be trying me. They try me every day. And I have to go in that bathroom and I have to pray. Because I know if I get in my flesh, it's going to be on the poppy. So I have to go in the bathroom and have to pray. You know what, though? I like that because we all have them problems. But something we want to do ourselves. Mm -hmm. It ain't always what it seems like. I know they've been messing up, Josh. I said, Lord, I just want to go in there one time and just cut up and just show everybody who I really am. I just want to show them. I just want them to see who they really messing with because I don't think they know what they're doing. Because they knew what they were doing, they would leave me alone. So, Lord, I need you to help me right now. I just want to go in there and go in on everybody and let them know that I am real. You messing with a man that loves God. So, the Bible says if one can make 10,000 fly, Two can make 20,000. Don't you know what we can do through the spirit? But see, God governed us. He's not going to let us do that. That's right. See, that's our flesh want to go in there and cut up. That's, right. uh -huh. that's exactly it. I said, boy, they just don't know. One time. I just need to get hold of one of them just let everybody see. If I can make an example out of him, the rest of them are back up. That's all. But praise be to God that through the spirit, he draws us back. To our remembrance that that's not the way to go. Amen. We can't let sin control us. We got to control sin. And see, it's real. People want to play. This flesh is no good. I don't care. You cannot. The flesh is not saved. You can't save the flesh. The flesh is no good. It will have you saying, doing all kind of things. It will. I'm living proof. And it had me doing that since I've been saved. See, people like talking about before they got saved. Don't talk about what's happening since I've been saved. That how I struggle with sin. But I got a way of escape through Jesus Christ. I got to learn how to govern to cut the flesh off and let the spirit take over. But when the spirit won't take over, that's when the flesh rise up. That's when you want to cut up. Just let me show one of them. That's all. Just let me just, just let me have this. I go repent and do whatever I have to do. Just let me do one. Yes, ma'am. And you can be minding your own business. You're not bothering nobody. You just want to do your job. Come on. I'm going to get you the best. And you have to, as uh, Sister Turner said, you got to kill that flesh. I mean, you got to slay that thing. Because it will, it will try to rise yeah. up. That yeah. old man. Even in the church, the even church. in the church, right. it happens right. where you come, you or you just trying to be a woman of God, man of God, and people will try you even mm -hmm. in church mm -hmm. because they deal with their own issues, mm -hmm. and we got to know that okay, this is my brother, this is my sister, we got to give them the benefit of the doubt and walk in the spirit, and not in the flesh, mm -hmm. because that's the same thing that happened to Jesus. He was walking in the spirit, and people that claimed to be saved were even trying him. Yes. Trying to pull it out of him, but you can't allow it to happen. But see, he had the power to overcome sin because, see, he never sinned. See, we were born in sin and shaped in niggas, so we came out the womb, we was already sinful people. Amen. See, he won't, he never had no sin. 
So we already got a fight with us and against us at all times. Sin don't care about you being saved. It don't care nothing about that. Yes, ma'am, Deacon Ed. Praise God, sister. Because, um, the reason I say that is because not just because things on my job, but just everyday living. But it's uh, one lady on my job seemed like she always coming for me for something, and I handled it pretty good. But in my mind, oh my God, you just don't know the things I be thinking. And, but you know, I ask the Lord to forgive me, and I move on. Hey, that's true. See, you allow the spirit to come in. See, we don't want to get it twisted. Sin going to do what it got to do, mm -hmm. but the spirit will do what it got to do if you allow it to. Right. See, we can govern and mock the spirit from keeping us. Yeah, you, okay. Um, um, when I was in, in the world, my thing was popularity and people liking it. Just, I wanted to be in the middle of the biggest crowd and everybody loved my friend, like 50, you know, 50 friends and it was all cool and all of that. So now that I'm I'm on the other side, it's like when people try to play my face, it just it just does something to me. Like you try to play me, like just because I'm not voicing my opinion like you, or just because you think that whatever you think about me, you're acting a certain type of way towards me, and it's and you're hurting my feelings. And once my feelings get hurt, it's like I have to walk away. I have to walk away and get myself together because I won't. I, like like she said, I want to get like I want to get revenge. I want you to feel the way I feel because you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're saying to me, and you don't know who I am. You you just know who you see when you come in here, but you don't really know my struggle. You don't know my life. You don't know what I've been through for you to come at me like that and then just assume that it's okay to do it to me. It's okay to say that she ain't gonna do nothing. She ain't supposed to get mad. Somebody said that to me the other day too. You you said you're not supposed to get mad, and I looked at them and I was like. See, the Bible says you can be angry, but sin not. See, the, the word type of, uh, terminology, see, we want to get physical. Mm -hmm. We want to see some furniture moving around up there. Uh -huh. See, we just want to get physical because that's what the old man, the old woman desired because that's what it always did. See, we didn't have no governance on us when we was in sin. See, sin took me further than I wanted to go. When I got on drugs, I thought I could handle it. And they think, I know, I'm out there robbing stores. I never thought I would do that. I had a good job. Just bought a house. So sin took me further than I wanted to go. But when I come to my realization, when I woke up in jail on the million dollar bond, I said, well, I don't believe I'm going to get out of this one. So Lord, I got to come back to you for what I know. I had to come to my senses. Because I told, I prayed and said, Lord, I don't want to go back out the way I came in. I want to go out with a renewed mind. Let your spirit guide us. And see, it's always, it's a war every day between the spirit and the flesh. Yes. It's up to you who you let win the most. That's right. But it, it behooves you if you let the spirit win 99 to 100% of the time. Yes, ma'am. Switch, Chris. Just hearing that song, Cycles. Mm -hmm. Cycles. The devil, he, he, he studies our cycles, but we also got to study our own cycles and know that he's coming to trip us up. It might not be the same way, but he coming. If he got to uppercut us or if he got to hit us in the side gut, he going to come with that same thing and try to trip us up. The, it's cycles. He's just doing the same thing over and over again. But we got to learn how to study that cat as well as he studies us. Because every day that we get up and we ask God, like we get up, I know me, myself, I get up and I talk to God and I ask God, because that job, my job, piece of work. But I thank God for being, I'm very blessed to be at that job. But it's a lot of headache and I'm dealing with cancer so I can't let, I can't let my coworkers uh, 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 make me act a certain way towards a cancer patient. But my whole thing is when I pray and I ask God to go before me, I know that everything that I encounter, God had to allow it to happen. Before, because when I tell the devil to go, he got to go. But if God allow it to happen to me, it's something that he want me to get out of. So I ask God to help me 
to, to humble myself and, and whatever it had it takes for me to, you know, I'm telling you, the other day, I about lost it and, and just said some things I was never supposed to say, but I didn't say it. I walked away. I was angry, but I didn't sin. I might sin in my mind, but I asked God to help me because people will take you. They know they know that you're you're kind and you don't you won't say but so many things to them. They won't you won't cuss them like they cuss you. Mm -hmm. But I thank God for the humbleness that He's placed down in me. Now I got upset uh, Thursday, but I had to walk away and I had to go home and I had to talk to myself because that cat come and take me out. He really does. He come and get you to lose your job, get you to lose everything that God has blessed you with. Mm -hmm. But I thank God that He gives us uh, uh, that that. Uh, a way of escape. He he knows how to re renew our, you know, help us in our minds. Cause it ain't you gonna do it. But, you know but what, oh, in them cycles, in them cycles, we have to study because next week he's gonna try the same thing again. But he's gonna come from a different. He's gonna use somebody else. But I thank God because once you get into this word and you hear him and, and you see people going through and, and Paul, I love how Paul said, every time I try to do right, every time. I mean, it'd be going real good, and then here he comes. But it's it's okay. Because I'm, I'm gonna keep trying. I'm gonna keep trying to defeat that. See, what we gotta realize that's his job. That's his job. Mm -hmm. We can't get mad. I ain't getting the devil no credit. The devil uh -huh. ain't making me. People always the devil made me do that and all. The devil ain't always coming. Maybe. It's the flesh in me that want to do it. It ain't the devil all the time. Maybe. It's what's in me that I'm letting rule me right then and see it. The sinful nature. Yes, ma'am. But when you're going through a whole lot of stuff and you hold on, something gonna come too. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's it's, a, it's both sides. Now, when you see one thing, when I learned that in Job, when they say the son of God, the son of men went to God, Satan all won. Satan also went. So something God allowed for us to go through to see are we really who we saying we are. We saying we love Him. And we saying we'll do these things, but then when the trials and the fear of ducks come, then we tuck our tail and run and do something else. Everything, if we just hold on right. to what's going on, it's going to come. It, he, it's one thing about it. God brought Job to it, and he brought Job That's through right. it. Right. And look at the reward That's that right. he got when we overcome sin. We got the victory called what Jesus Christ did. Mm -hmm. Not what we doing. But what he did, what did it say, where is your steam, hmm. old devil in the grave? Where is it at? He come and pulled the teeth. So the enemy now don't have the victory no more. We got it. So we got to learn to how to live in the flesh and in the spirit. Because, like you say, in his flesh is no good thing. So in the spirit, we got to say, Lord, I need you. Help me. Sometimes it be some spur of the moments. I seen a dude cut a guy off the other day, man, and I could just see that guy my way he was talking. I said, Lord, why put a watch on my cause that could have been me. Somebody cut off. I don't want to curse nobody out. I don't. I haven't done it. I ain't say I haven't thought it, but I haven't come out my mouth with it. I haven't bust nobody upside the head. Praise God. I had called nobody to go my barn or nothing, so praise God for that. So let's thank God for what Jesus done. And let's learn, when we walk in in the spirit, it's no good of feeling than to show the enemy that you had just conquered him and all his snares and tears that he has set up for us. We got a way out. And the way out is Jesus Christ. You can't beat him. You can't, you can't win. But he already won for us. Paul was teaching them, you got victory over sin. We don't have to live by sin no more. Yes, ma'am. Just like on Friday, I had to cook in the kitchen. And I was playing my gospel music. So I had it up. I didn't know it was that loud. And my supervisor come in and she's like, you need to turn that down. Y'all nobody want to hear all that. I said, okay. I said, I said this is from devils up in here. You do need to hear it. I agree with you. But what I would have said, I said, yes, ma'am. I didn't mean to disturb nobody. I just got carried away in the spirit. See, that's a spirit moment 
right then because you're glorifying God. But see, what we got to further realize, we work with a whole lot of unsaved people now. You know, everybody on the job ain't saved. So you're going to go through all these trials and tribulations on your job because everybody is not saved on your job. Everybody's not saved. We pray that they get saved, but everybody is not saved on your job. So you're going to have trials and tribulations. But when the Spirit take in and I get to glorify God, I don't care what they say. I'm going to talk about Jesus Christ right then because I'm in the Spirit. That's what I know to glorify him. When you're in the flesh, you ain't talking about Jesus Christ. Who talking about Jesus Christ when they're in the flesh? You're talking about getting back, doing something. He wronged me. They don't know who they're messing with. That ain't in the spirit. The spirit is to pray for them. That the spitefully use you. That's what we got to do. That's when you know you're in the spirit when you can pray for somebody that you know doing you wrong. That's the spirit work. When you know they stand in your face and tell you a bald face lie. They go to your boss, man, and tell them around you. They all will call you to lose your job, but you stand there and you stand flat firm and you like I told my, I told my supervisor. I said, two things I won't do. I ain't gonna lie to you and I ain't gonna lie on you. That's two things you ain't gonna have to worry about me doing. If I tell you I did it, I did it. If I tell you I didn't do it, I don't care what kind of you, how you form it in your mind, my word is good. Now it is, it ain't always been that way. But to me, I think it's good. But see, we gotta learn that it's a sinful world out there. And we're gonna go through these trials and tribulations every day. I wish I could say it's gonna be easy. But it's a whole lot more easy with Jesus Christ. It's a whole lot more easy walking in the spirit of God. It's more blessings. It's a victory. You feel comfortable. Your stress ain't as high. You drop your blood pressure down. When you're in the spirit, everything is calm. Hey, she just smiling. See, that's what I like right there. She don't have a care in the world. That's where we need to get sometimes. Not a care in the word, no matter what going on around Amen. you. Just let it happen. But you rejoice what's in you. They told us to be a light, didn't it? Into a dark situation. Let the world see that they may glorify your Father in heaven. So I pray in God to think that we have victory over sin. Amen. Through what Jesus Christ did on the cross. With his dying and resurrection come back. He said, I didn't come to do away with the law, but he come to fulfill it. Yes, Christians, born again believers, saved people, we gonna have challenges. It gonna be oppositions. Yes, it gonna be some time when we walk in the flesh, but we gotta kill it when we gonna walk in the spirit, because if you walk in the flesh too long, it gonna lead you further than you wanna go. Now, it takes a lifetime to build up a testimony, but it only takes two or three seconds to kill it. That's right. Then the first, what the first thing they want to say when soon you go off? Oh, I thought she or he was a Christian. Mm -hmm. That's what they want to open them up. I, I knew it. See, I knew they was going to do it. They, they, they fake it. Mm -hmm. See, that's what they want. They want you to, to discredit who you really are. That's, that's it. right. That's it. That's right. They want to discredit Jesus. I told you. I knew they was going to do it. I knew it. I knew it. But praise be to God, I have it. Amen. Thank be to God for Jesus Christ. See, as you being a born again believer, you got to feel, see, the, we, we ain't got far to leave because the spirit lives within us. So when he rises up, we got to tell that old nasty flesh, not today. You're not going to win today. I'm not going to let you cause me. But I look like slapping doing a job. Now I gotta go home. I gotta come in front of y'all and tell you I lost my job before I slapped the guy. Now I gotta go home and tell my wife I slapped the guy. Well, the only thing I should do is just walk off. Because we're going up a mile. That's all it is. It's, for the, it's, it's the test. Are we gonna pass the test between the flesh and the, and the spirit? Amen. Anybody got any more questions? Anybody want to comment on what's been going on? Has anybody got anything out of it? Amen. Amen. I just pray to God that we be spirit filled. See, the Bible says the spirit ain't always going to dwell with us. So you got to have it built up. You got to have enough in you to carry you when it's not dead. That's right. See, that flesh ain't slapper. 
I got you. Pistol whooping. Go kick that door in. But, see, that's the plot. That's the plot. As you're going, you better start praying and ask God to change your mind. There's some things I was going to do, and I thank God he changed my mind before I got there. I thank God that I listened to the Spirit. I let the Spirit take over and control me instead of me staying in the flesh. I'm going to say it one more time. No good thing dwells in this flesh. It's hungry for sin because that's what it knows. It's sin nature. Flesh. That's what it is. It's sin nature. That's all it knows. It got a big appetite for the world. But we are not of the world. Hey, Spirity, how you doing? Hey, man, she's feeling my spirit right now, man. She seems so happy. Anybody got any more comments? Yes, ma'am. Christ done. We can't be slaves to sin no more because Jesus come and took all that away. We got to learn now to be able. We can do it. But through him, we can't do it on our own power. Yes, I was a felony. Yes, I didn't have no life. I was everything, but I, had, I couldn't have a baby. Like you were talking about. But God blessed me. And he blessing us. Through the victory, what his son did. So we can't keep beating ourselves down or what happened. We got to live for the day. We fight and trying to win, and the fight has already been won. We can't win it. It's already been won. So we ain't got to fight the war. Only thing we got to do is live up to the expectations of what God requires of us. And that's not to be living in sin, but to respect and respond to him. Amen. Can we stand to our feet? I don't hear the music. I pray God. I pray that somebody got something. I know I did. Amen. I was able to enter myself from myself. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we are our biggest enemies. Right. Yes. Amen. Sometimes we trip our own self up and we want to claim somebody else. Amen. Amen. So I have to be real with myself. So I'm going to ask Minister Jamal, can he come up and lead us out of prayer? Please? Amen. 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 Father God, we thank you, God. Just for this lesson, God, that you have allowed our ears to hear, God. We thank you, God, for your word, and we have hid in our hearts. We thank you for the strength that you've given us, God, to endure situations on our jobs and our homes and even in ministry, God. We thank you for everything that you are and everything that you're doing 
we pray, God, that this word, God, begin to uh, begin to rest in our hearts even the more, God, on this week. We pray, God, that you will touch the teacher, God, touch the ears that heard it. And we pray, God, even for the next move, God, that is getting ready to take place, God, that you continue to prepare us, God, that we can be ready, God, and meant for your use, God. We thank you, God, for every trial, every obstacle, God, that you have allowed us to overcome. And we give you all the glory, knowing, God, that victory is in your hands, God. We thank you for allowing victory to be in our lives, for allowing your grace and your mercy, God, to follow us all the days of our lives. God, we thank you this day, God. We can't thank you enough, God, for everything that you have done and everything that you are doing, God. And we pray, God, this day, God, that you will continue to prepare our steps, God. Order our steps according to your word in Jesus.